Tarot, Part 4, Ancient and Modern. Comparing only the most recent and the original ideograms of the 22 tarot trumps as a hieroglyphic syllabary yields a wide margin of time within which for the more subtle nuances in the evolution of the tarot trumps meaning to get lost. However, we shall be comparing only the original hieroglyphic with its oldest associated attributes to only the most modern tarot trump versions. This will indeed show the same form of evolution as could be seen to occur over a more gradual span, looking at all the decks in between. However, it will prove a starker contrast by which to measure the similarities of attribute between the modern tarot trump images and their original hieroglyphic symbolism. We will be comparing the original glyphs first to the tarot trumps designed according to the descriptions given in the Golden Dawn cipher manuscripts. It is important to note these cipher manuscripts only describe certain cards, the trumps, from among the entire deck released by the Golden Dawn group itself. Thus, while these trumps are authentic to the Golden Dawn tradition, the images on the remainder of the cards are to be seen more as the invention of A.E. Waite, who designed them based in part on original pictures by L.F.S. Levy. Secondly, we will compare each hieroglyphic original of the Tarot Trumps to the versions designed by Alastair Crowley, the Golden Dawn Dropout, and O.T.O. Ipsissimus. While the purpose, according to Waite, for the Golden Dawn Tarot deck was to forward the mystery tradition, specifically by packaging the ordinary playing card deck with the trumps as a means of reinvigorating New Age interest in Tarot. Alistair Crowley's purpose was to remove the Golden Dawn deck from primary significance in that regard, and to distill the significance of the symbolism of the Tarot trumps, specifically by adding more correspondent symbols to each image. Bear these motives of 20th century men in mind as we compare their respective works of art as reception of the original hieroglyphic message intended behind the tarot. Atu Zero, the Fool. The first letter was Aleph, and the shape of the Aleph was based on the shape of the Egyptian hieroglyphic of bull or ox horns. Thus, the original shape of the letter in the hieroglyphic syllabary was kept as a key to decoding all the world's ancient writing systems in the Library of Alexandria, Egypt. The shape of this letter eventually became transformed into the image of the Fool card in modern Tarot. Here we see the Golden Dawn version of the first Tarot trump, so ingrained on our current collective consciousness as a quite unique piece of art entirely apart from the simple hieroglyph from which its shape originally derived. The Tarot has become in modern times a collection of anthropomorphications of the letters of Hebrew and their original hieroglyphic meanings. Thus the symbolic signification of the letter Aleph is now a depiction of a young traveler standing on a precarious cliff face over a tumultuous ocean with the sun and a small dog behind him. However, if you look very closely, you will see the image of the bullhorn hieroglyph hidden in the pack strap of his knapsack. Aleister Crowley was no stranger to the hieroglyphics of Egypt, nor to the original meanings of the Hebrew letters. He also incorporated his knowledge of the Torah as a hieroglyphic syllabary into his deck's depictions of the trump cards. However, because he was following the tradition begun before him by the Golden Dawn deck, he was forced to compromise his imagery between the original syllabary symbols and the anthropomorphic depictions in the Golden Dawn tarot deck. His symbolism of the Fool card reflects some additional symbolic elements associated with the original letter as well as more closely resembles the letter in its figure. 
Atu One, the Magician. The hieroglyphic rendition of the original meaning of the Hebrew letter Pe was a mouth. However, the Egyptian hieroglyph of a mouth symbolized silence. Thus, the earliest conception of the trait equivalent to the planetary attribute of Mercury was the silent psychopomp who led the dead through the Valley of Shadows towards the light at the end of the tunnel in the rebirth from the underworld ritual of primitive superstitious shamanism. That the letter Pe and the corresponding hieroglyphic apply to the planet Mercury and thus to the magician trump card of Tarot are calculated according to a variant method from that used by the Golden Dawn who associated the letter Beth Hebrew for B with the planet Mercury and who thus associated the magician card with the letter Beth whose meaning was house however regardless of having ordered the correspondent Hebrew letter differently the essential hieroglyphic trait is still the emphasized aspect of the anthropomorphic depiction of the letter in the golden dawn magician card the robed young male holds up a candle burning at both ends and points downward with the other hand before him on a table are the four essential instruments Crowley's magician card associates mercury with Beth also however Crowley was no stranger to the mysterious demi-deity of Egypt, Horpakrat, called Harpocrates in Greek, the archetypal god of silence, associated with the concept in magic of not revealing one's methods to the uninitiated. Crowley's image is of Hermes the fleet-footed messenger, Greek god surrounded by the elements of art. Atu Tu the papis. Because the original order of letters in the Hebrew alphabet was different from the order in which they were at the time the Golden Dawn Tarot deck was made, we find the original placement of the letter Beth, Hebrew B, as third in the syllabary as it corresponds to the traits of the Tarot. Beth, meaning house, was a feminine letter and used in names like Bethany, and Bethlehem, meaning house of God. Thus, it is associated with the female character of the high priestess, Pope Joan, or Papist card. The usual depiction in the Golden Dawn deck, regardless of having the letter Gimel, Hebrew G, in place of the letter Beth, retains the essential hieroglyphic meaning of house rather than camel. The twin pillars behind the anthropomorphic letter Beth have the letters J and B on them, symbolizing a mystery known best to Freemasons. However, the mystery deepens considering the transposition of the letter Gimel, juxtaposing the letter Beth. The Crowleyan rendition of the priestess shows the dilemma most clearly by minimizing the image of the camel, the meaning of the letter Gimel, beside the image of the priestess, shown waving a vast net upon an immense loom, symbolizing the feminine household. Again, the modern images cannot escape their hieroglyphic origins. Atu III, the Empress. Again, the letter is out of order from the original Hebrew alphabet of the Torah as a hieroglyphic syllabary in the modern versions. And so we find the attribute of Venus, attributed to Kaf, Hebrew K, in the original syllabary, but to the letter fourth in the sequence in the modern Hebrew alphabet, which at the time of the Golden Dawn's reformation of the Torah, was the letter Daleth, Hebrew letter D. Thus, though the letter Daleth signifies a door, a door is not shown in the image presented for the Empress card in the 22 Tarot Trump deck. Instead, the image is based on the original hieroglyph signifying the outstretched open hand hieroglyphic comparable to the letter Kaf rather than to the door signified by the letter Daleth. Here we see the Golden Dawn version of the Empress image 
rose-patterned robed young woman holding out a short scepter and seated in a wheat field. It should be significant also to associate the Anunnaki character trait Demuzi with the wheat and fir trees surrounding the recumbent empress in the Golden Dawn image. Tammuz, the Persian version of Sumerian Demuzi, represented a psychopomp alike Hermes, however was venerated by the seasonal holiday of harvesting the wheat before winter. That Demuzi is male, and Venus traditionally female, is also significant to the use of the rose symbol in the Golden Dawn deck to symbolize a greater concealed mystery. Thus, the Empress, in her cloak of many mysteries, may symbolize not the hermetic hermaphrodite, but a male rather than female god. Here we see the Crowleyan version of the Empress. Again, as throughout, we will see Crowley's images littered with superfluous symbols, copiously cross-referenced and checked to correspond to one another according to Crowley's lugubrious charts in 777 which only makes sense if you understand the confusion between the original hieroglyphic syllabary letter signified by the anthropomorphic character as opposed to the affiliated attributes of the letter in that place in the modern Hebrew alphabet. Here we see correspondent attributes of the planet Venus. While the door of Daleth might be implied in the uppermost archway, the outstretched arms hieroglyph is here mimicked almost perfectly in the character. Atu IV, the Emperor The hieroglyph most useful to depict the idea symbolized by the Hebrew letter He, attributed to the Emperor Tarot trump card, is debatable. I have here chosen the right eye of Horus, Ra, to symbolize the window meaning of He. The reason for this is the ancient saying, the eye is the window to the soul, and the Egyptian concept of fascination or the evil eye, mal -akio. The window concept in itself is not evil, however possesses more symbolism depending on whether one is inside or outside of it. In this same sense it is said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The Golden Dawn image for He, the window, plays heavily on the association of this letter with Aries, usually the starting sign of the regular reading of the astrologic zodiac. We see the Emperor, an old man with a long white beard wearing a crown and holding an Ankh scepter, seated on a stone-carved throne decorated with four ram's heads, the symbol of Aries. Crowley's depiction of the emperor preserves the mirroring of posture and contraposition of colors with the empress, and, like the Golden Dawn depiction, positions prominently the symbol of the ram.